So hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Arnold here. So today's session, I'm basically going to uh, talk about how VAT works. Basically, I'm just going to, these are just um, to, 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 to build the concept from scratch regarding how VAT works. So I'm going to use some illustrations here, some boxes that I'm going to draw here just to explain how VAT works. In other words, how VAT is calculated. Now, um, just some preamble, a brief one. VAT is just tax that is charged on sales. And uh, on, it's charged when someone is selling, they include that VAT component when they are selling, they charge the VAT. And of course, this VAT can only charged by someone who is registered for VAT. In other words, you have to be registered for value added tax legally for you to be able to charge VAT on your invoices that you are issuing. Now, value added tax or call it VAT is a consumer tax. So it means that the more you consume, the more VAT you pay. That is how it works. And the final burden of VAT is mostly borne or by the final consumer. I have drawn uh, some four boxes here and I'm going to give them special names. Okay, this is, an, in other words, we are looking at a product. Let's look at sugar, okay? Um, here we do grow sugarcane in my country and uh, when we grow this sugarcane we it is always processed in these factories and sugar is made so uh, the process of uh, this sugar is it's going to first go into a factory so at this stage we have what we call a manufacturer okay so from the manufacturer, uh, the manufacturer is going to manufacture the sugar. This manufacturer is going to sell this processed sugar to the wholesaler. Uh, then the wholesaler is going to sell that sugar to the retailer. And then that retailer is going to sell that sugar to the final consumer. So this final consumer we are saying that is the one that is going to bear the entire burden of VAT. So um, before VAT came, there was what we used to call the co uh, transaction levy, the consumer transaction levy, call it CTL, or call it the sales tax. This means that uh, the person, the, the, the end consumer was the one supposed to directly pay that levy. But now when VAT comes in, now the issue of uh, the issue of charging VAT became different. So whereas it is the final consumer that is going to pay the VAT or the, the, the VAT tax, the burden is going to be borne by the final consumer, but the persons that actually pay that money to government are the people that are in the value chain. That is the manufacturer or the wholesaler or the retailer, like we are going to see. But to illustrate this better, um, allow me begin an illustration of this value chain, how the sugar gets to the final consumer, but I'm going to illustrate it when it's like the normal using without using the VAT. Let's say that the buying and the selling has no tax. So let's first look at it from that perspective. So here we have, of course, we say this is a manufacturer, so they are going to get sugar cane. Okay. So they'll get sugarcane and they'll process it in this factory, okay? And so let's say that the costs they incurred in getting this sugarcane, let's say it is 1,000, right? Okay, 1,000. In other words, this is a factory that is having its own sugarcanes and whatever. So there is not going to be... They, they are just incurring costs in getting that sugarcane, paying the workers that are going to get the sugarcane, in other words, the raw materials into the factory. So when they do so, the factory processes. And so when the factory processes this sugarcane, what is going to happen is that it's going to sell that sugarcane to the wholesaler. I mean, sell the sugar to the wholesaler. Okay, the sugar crystals. So it means the factory is going to sell 
this sugar. Let's say it sells this sugar at 2,000, okay? At 2,000 shillings. So it means that this wholesaler is, so this wholesaler is going to buy that sugar at that price of 2,000. And so this wholesaler is going to go ahead and sell that to the retailer. So we are going to go ahead, the wholesaler will sell, the, he's supposed to sell at a profit. So if he bought at 2,000, it means he's going to sell it at a higher price. Let's say the person sells it at 3,000. So the wholesaler sells the sugar at 3,000 to the retailer. So it means the retailer here is going to go ahead and buy this sugar at 3,000, okay? And the retailer, of course, is also supposed to sell this sugar at a profit to uh, the final consumer. So that it's going to sell at maybe at a higher price. Let's say that is 4,000. Okay, when the person sells that, pass, that sugar at 4,000, so the final consumer is going to, you know, buy that sugar at that price. So the consumer is going to buy the sugar at 4,000. So this illustration is when there is no tax involved, no VAT. The manufacturer sells at 2,000, the buyer buys at 2,000. The wholesaler then increases to 3,000, sells it at a profit, then the retailer will buy it at that much and sell it at 4,000, like the value chain. In other words, what I'm trying to show you here is how things are flowing from the manufacturer down to the wholesaler, the value chain, okay, to the consumer. That is how basically, typically, uh, that is it. That is how it is. Now, I would like to let you know, guys, that by the time somebody buys sugar at 2,000, for example, I'm looking at the wholesaler, they, they buy this sugar at 2,000 from the factory and they sell it at 3,000, that means here yeah, they have made a profit of 1,000. In th that means that this wholesaler is satisfied with what they they are satisfied. In other words, they've recovered all the costs they, they incurred and they've topped up a margin to, you know, to make a profit. So they make a profit of 3,000. And this is how basically it is when, um, you know, when, when there is no VAT involved. Now, VAT comes in, value added tax. So now that value added tax is actually supposed to be on top of this money. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that when, when the our component on VAT comes in, you simply, this VAT is just a tax that is going to be levied on these monies. Or what I'm trying to stress here is that you're supposed to make your money. Uh, in other words, you're supposed to sell your product and then you put your profit on top of it. Then VAT comes in later. So in other words, VAT is a component, a tax component that is not supposed to be interfering with your profit. It is supposed to be something that you top up on top of after you have recovered your costs and your profits. So what does that mean? It means that uh, uh, that that, that uh, v, the, the VAT that you're including, the, your t the top up you're putting as VAT, these figures here are going to be our bases or they're the ones that we are going to impose VAT on. So in my country, VAT is levied at 18%. Now we all know that tax is low. Different countries have different rates for VAT. So I will use VAT 18% for my country, which is Uganda. So let's get started. So now we are going to start adding the VAT component now. What if now this, there is VAT involved? How will these things look like? Okay, so here 2000, uh, um, well, of course here at, at purchasing, you know, when this person was, the manufacturer was buying, remember the, the raw materials were sourced from their gardens or their estates to do the sugar. So there was, this 1000 I put was just a cost they incurred. There was no VAT to pay out here. However, when they were selling, they, in, they, they sell at 2,000, then plus the VAT, what is 18% of 2,000, that is going to be 360. So it means that the VAT component here is 360. So if this person is selling at 360, it means the person buying here is also supposed to charge 360. So in other words, the manufacturer charged 360 VAT so this wholesaler, upon purchasing, incurred VAT. 
Then the wholesaler also upon selling is going to charge VAT on their invoice. So the VAT that is 18% of 3,000 3, is going to be 540, that's the VAT. So it means this retailer that is buying from the wholesaler on top of paying the 3,000, they're also going to pay an extra 540 for VAT. And so when the sell, retailer is also selling at a profit, uh, they are supposed to charge VAT 720. So it means this consumer, when they are buying this thing uh, uh, from the retailer, they are also going to pay an extra 720 as VAT. So yeah, that is it. Now this VAT, as you can see, this wholesale, the, the, the manufacturer, the, the, the final, you know, the final VAT liability is borne by the consumer. So it means that what you're seeing here is that yes, uh, whereas uh, the final consumer bought this product at 4,000, they paid VAT at uh, 720, okay? 720, that is the final VAT of the consumer, paid by the consumer. But this consumer is paying this VAT to the retailer. Now the question is that throughout this process, how uh, how is this VAT remitted to government? Remember, uh, VAT, whereas it is charged by the consumer, it is the, the final burden is borne by the consumer, its um, remittance is remitted th uh, during this chain. So how do we calculate the amount of VAT to remit to government? So this is how it is calculated. We it is calculated by looking at the amount of VAT uh, charged on sales minus the VAT charged on purchases. And uh, what remains is what you give to government. So let's look at the manufacturer. Now we are assuming that the manufacturer is VAT registered. The wholesaler is VAT registered. The retailer is VAT registered. Of course, the, the consumer, the final consumers are not VAT registered. For you to be VAT registered, there is there are some there is a criteria you're supposed to follow, according to our Ugandan law. I'll get into those details in later videos. So, if the manufacturer is VAT registered, it means they're supposed to file a VAT return to declare the VAT. So, to calculate the VAT liability here, we are going to get VAT on sales minus VAT on purchases. Now, remember, the manufacturer never purchased anything because they just got the raw materials from there you know, from their gardens or from their estates. So there was no VAT on purchases. However, they inc they paid VAT on sales. So it means that the manufacturer, the VAT they are going to have to pay is going to be this 360 minus the zero. So they are going to pay 360 to government. That is in this case to URA. Okay, that's money going to URA, Uganda Revenue Authority. Come to the wholesaler. The wholesaler they incurred, they, 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 you know, they received 540 uh, VAT when they were selling. However, when they were purchasing, they paid out 360 VAT. So in this case, we are going to say what is 540 minus 360. In other words, what's the VAT that they collected minus the VAT that they paid out? The VAT they paid out on purchases is 360. The PAT they collected is 540. So 540 minus 360, 540 minus 360 is going to give us 180. So it means 180 is the VAT this wholesaler is going to pay to government for that product. Let's get to the retailer. The retailer, it's the same story. The retailer collected 720 in uh, VAT for when they collected it. However, they gave out when they were purchasing, they paid 540 to the wholesaler. So this retailer, how much VAT are they going to, to pay to government? It's going to be the VAT they collected minus the VAT they paid out. So what's the difference between the 2720 minus 540? It's going to be 180. So it means that the retailer also is going to pay out 180 you know, uh, VAT. Now, of course, these ones, the manufacturer, the wholesaler, and the retailer in this chain, they are custodians. They are collecting VAT on behalf of government. That is why they are required to file tax returns, that is VAT returns, and remit them to government. 
So you will find that along this chain, if you if I get here and add 360, which is this, plus the 180, plus the, that other 180, if I'm to add up all those three, that is 8 plus 8 is 16, six, no, yeah, 16 plus 6, you, this is going to be 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You, may, you realize that that is 750, uh, 720. And you realize that this 720, which has been collected along the supply chain, is equivalent to the 720 that the final consumer paid. So what does that mean? It, that this is what I was mentioning at the very beginning, that the um the vat liability is act the burden the final burden is indirectly borne or is indirectly bared by i don't know if that is correct english the final liability is actually met by the final consumer however this liability is something that has been collected along the chain you know as the thing as the product is moving from its manufacturing phase to the final consumer stage so yeah that is basically how vat works uh vat input uh, vat at purchase vat on sales minus vat on purchases the balance is what is remitted to government so that is what that that, that is how they calculate vat so um of course this is a very basic understanding of vat as we move on along the video series, um, we shall be introducing more and more um, dynamics around VAT. My name is Arnold Kisembo Ruanga Kuramia. Catch you in the next session. Take care.